IndieBudgetMovieMaker.com, where we're going to show you how you can make your own short film or videos without spending a lot of money. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Eugene with IndieBudgetMovieMaker.com. Uh, today we're doing our basic Cinelera tutorial. I'm uh, going to show you uh, just some basics about uh, the the program, what some of the the windows are, how you can open up some files, load them into your timeline. Uh, we're going to splice some uh, different uh, video uh, clips together and uh, add some uh, very basic effects, put in a transition or two, and render it out. And uh, you should be on your well on your way. Now, if uh, you're looking for information on Cinelera as well, go to Cinelera.org. You got a lot of good information there as well. Check out our website, Indie Budget Movie Maker. Okay, Cinelera. Let's see here. Uh, we'll open up our preferences window here. I am using the 2.1 CV community version. That is, there is a 4.1 version out there. I, I've heard about it. Uh, has a few more features than the 2.1. It's a little bit buggier, uh, not quite a po as a polished a, uh, a program, so I'm going to stick with 2.1. Works fine for me. I'll uh, give you a quick overview of what we got here. The, uh, the window here that I'm shaking has a uh, video clip on it uh, in the timeline. Of course, you got your timeline in there. You got your drop down uh, menus here where you can do a lot of commands, a lot of functions, worthy of uh, taking your time to check them all out here. Uh, you have your patch bay here where you can uh, arm a track. Uh, that way if, if it's not armed, it, you're, not, you're not going to put an effect to it or uh, be able to uh, make any changes on it as far as the length. We have the gang faders. Um, this way here, like in the audio here, if I click on the fader bar, all three of, or all four, pardon me, of my uh, audio tracks are going to be adjusted uh, the exact same. That way you keep some uh, some parity in what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit my Z to uh, undo any effects I just did there. Okay, uh, you see we've got a video here in the timeline and as I move the cursor here you can see in the compositor window up top here you can see our uh, our Adam Age vampire here uh, transforming. I'll go ahead and play it for you there. As you see the uh, the position indicator here, it corresponds to uh, what's going on in your video. Hit pause, and let's see here. Let's make the window a little bit bigger. So we've got uh, your player functions here, where you can uh, go ahead and advance one frame at a time. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and fast forward it. Or you can go all the way to the end of your clip, or to the beginning with your and your rewind functions here. You've got some of your uh, camera automation tools here. You've got your projector automation. That's where you can uh, zoom in, zoom out, and pan across your your video or your image. Uh, you've got your crop tool here and uh, your color selector here, and your toggle switch to show your tool info, which brings up your uh, your, your tool info, like if we're on the uh, the camera automation, there it gives you the coordinates for it, and then the uh, projector automation it gives you the coordinates for it, and then as well your horizontal justification and your vertical justification as well. Uh, let's go on to the the viewer here. With your viewer, you can uh, take a clip off your media, pull here, drag it and drop. When you see the white box, it's on there. You've got the slider there where you can uh, slide across it here. Let's say we wanted to uh, crop this one here. At this point in time here, we can set an end point. And right there, if we wanted to uh, set an out point, just the video that's between these two points here would be put on our timeline. Let's go to the timeline here and select an end point. We've got the green end point marker there. And when we hit splice, it automatically appears in our timeline there. Um, so that, that's uh, what your uh, viewer is for. Go on to the resources here. You've got your media tab here, which shows you uh, what media clips you have in this uh, particular project you're working on. You have your audio effects, where you can do some uh, audio sweetening and the like. Um, 
change your audio to your uh, to your liking. You've got your video effects where you can adjust things as brightness, contrast, hue saturation. Check out the unsharp picture there. Sharpen quite a contrast, huh? Okay, uh, we have all of one audio transition. I don't know if you can add more. Um, I do the majority of my audio work in Audacity. I like that. But you might be able to get more for Cinelera. And then we have our video transitions here onto this tab here. Let's go ahead and start a new project here. We're just going to go new. And here's the pop-up box that came up. Okay, uh, you want to make sure that you have your settings correct as far as frame rate and the size of the video. If it's not matched up and you put a video on it, you may have some crashing issues. Uh, so you want to be sure and get that get that set correct. Uh, we're going to be using 720 by 480 like it is there. Uh, we're going to go with one video track and we've uh, got a 30 uh, frames per second frame rate on it. As well, for your audio, you can uh, select how many tracks you're going to have. Let's go ahead and give us four tracks here on this one here, and it's going to be stereo and uh, 48,000 on the sample right there. So we've got a new project going. Let's go ahead and load some files here. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, let's see. Who wants to see some, uh, some Betty Page here? Let's do Betty Page. Let's uh, do a freaky eyeball coming out of a guy. And let's get uh, good old Dracula involved. And let's get a screaming skull. Okay, so let's click on media. What well, one thing I didn't show you about here when you load files, you have your uh, insertion strategy, and it was already selected create new resources only. And what that did is it put the the videos here into the clips into the resources. It did not drop them into the timeline. Had I have gone to a point on the timeline, put an endpoint, and then say pasted insertion point, it would have put it there where I put the insertion point. So you've got some flexibility there and as to how you're going to uh, insert your uh, your clips when you load them. All right, let's go on here. And uh, let's uh, take uh, Betty Page, drop her onto the viewer. Let's go ahead and splice that. Let's see here. We got her smiling. Let's get where it just goes into her face. Click one more. Let's set that as an endpoint. Okay, and let's go back a little bit. There we go, and we will set that as our out point. Let's go ahead and go to about three seconds there and make that our end point. We're going to hit the, uh, the splice control there, and let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. That's what this button's for, and then the up would zoom out and as well another thing you can toggle is hit this symbol here fit selection to display and it, it kind of gives you a, a better view of things had I have just gone into the use this selector here selected part of it fit selection to display it, it zooms in the area that you've selected let's deselect that and fit it into the track let's go ahead and go to the end of our clip. Let's go ahead and put. All right, thanks for watching. That's it for part one. Be sure and click on the link so you can watch part two. Got any questions? Put them down below. Check out our website. Thanks again. And I just want to say a great big thank you to each and every one of you for dropping by today. Now, y'all drive careful. Come back and see us, and you can always check out our website. 